Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're actually going to do SSRT tips and tricks. This is, uh, SSRT stands for Single Staged Rocket Technology. It was a terminology used by McDonnell Douglas before they became Boeing and before SSTO was actually a thing. Go ahead and Google Single Staged Rocket, rocket Technology. You'll get a whole bunch of uh, neat little pictures that will pop up and uh, history and whatnot. But, um, so single stage rocket rocket technology is basically an SSTO, but it gets up there via rocket and not via some sort of futuristic space plane. So if you're interested in building a SSRT in Kerbal Space Program, you're going to need a few tips. So let's go ahead and do a simple SSRT build. This is just to get, um, get you uh, up to speed about uh, Delta V that you're going to need and all this other good stuff. When building an SSRT, drag is very important. You want to make sure you have as least amount of drag as possible. Also, because of the fact that SSRTs are rocket-based technologies, that means that you're going to have to have a lot of delta V just to get up into orbit. Preferably, I usually go for at least 4,000 delta V. So this right here isn't going to work. So what I did was I switched it up and put a vector liquid fuel engine on here and I doubled the fuel tanks. Now I have well over 4,000 Delta V, which is actually way more than what you need for an SSRT. But we can use this to our advantage and give this thing maybe some landing legs or some other little neat little things. So as you can see, I added some landing struts on here, the, LT, the LT2s, and already I lost almost uh, over 200 meters per second Delta V. So I think that's good for now. Now the cool thing about SSRTs is that they're actually really easy to fly and really easy to build. Other than making sure that you don't have a whole lot of drag, all you need to do is make sure that it has about 4000 Delta V. As you can see, once it loads up into the game world, it's telling me that it has just shy of 4000 Delta V, but I think it'll be okay. The flight plan is just similar of like launching a rocket. So no special flight plan like if you would, uh, if you were flying some sort of more sophisticated SSTO. Other than fuel consumption being of course the trade-off, an SSRT is actually way easier and simpler to fly and build. And in some cases it's even easier to bring back to Kerbin because it's uh, pretty much a projectile trajectory. You don't have to worry about flying or anything of this nature. It's just just land. All right, let's give it a test go. See what happens here. Tell you honestly, I have never flown anything quite like this before. But if everything is according to what I know, this should be relatively simple. In three, two, one. I reached about eighty. About 90 meters per second before I start. Whoa! Before I start my tilt, there we go. I tilt to about 90 degrees, and for some reason, I don't have prograde. Okay. Uh, where's my prograde? One second. Yeah, I noticed that my pilot was like zero stars, but that really, I mean, I don't, I'm, I don't know anymore, guys. Screw it. Okay, so not only delta V is important, but also thrust to weight ratio. Too much thrust to weight ratio and you're going to have a hard time getting up there. You might have all the delta V in the world, but you'll never really circularize, circularize very well in orbit. All right, and three, two, one, go. And at about 80, there we go. Let's go to tilt down to 90 degrees. Throttling down. All right, our apoapsis is in uh, in orbit now, or in space. Throttling, throttling down, try to get that nose to come down a little bit. Remember that you don't ever want to force the nose down because then you just, you're just wasting fuel as you're burning away from your prograde. You want to burn with the prograde, not away from it. All right, we're just about 80,000 apoapsis. We'll coast up the rest of the way. About 15 seconds out, we'll go ahead and start our burn. There we go, full power. But it's slowing down, there we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. I hit the wrong button. All right, so a little bit of uh, oops there by me because it's early in the morning. But we're in space and we have over 800 delta V left over. Like I said before, the payload that I'm 
putting up there right now is of course the Kerbals in their capsule, but if you wanted to do an actual cargo mission, you could use the same principles of at least having 4000 Delta V and at least having a one half TWR, so 1.5 TWR at least. And once you get up to about 80 meters per second, that's when you want to start your turn down to 90 degrees and then hit prograde. Once of course your prograde reaches your point of attack or, or angle of attack or however, I forgot what it is, right? And it's too early in the morning. But once you have all that set up, just keep an eye on your atmospheric indicator up here. I'm sure there's a fancy name for it. And make sure that once your indicator says that you're about halfway through, that your nose is pointing at least 45 degree angle. And then you can throttle down uh, as much as you need to in order to bring the nose down more and more and more. Until finally you turn off the engines, you coast up to about 15, 15 to 20 seconds out from your apoapsis. And once you reach the 15, 20 seconds mark to your apoapsis that's when you full burn into orbit throttling down as you need to or throttling up as you need to so now i'm going to go ahead and land this thing real quick in the video about 55 apoapsis or 55 periapsis however it might be yeah that's good right there okay I know, I know, I know, I know. I'll transfer some fuel into the back here, make it a little more stable. I didn't have any, I didn't have, uh, I forgot to put some, something on here to generate power, but you can do that in your builds. Now, of course, realistically, you would want some sort of, ideally, you'd want some sort of heat shield covering the engine and the rest of the craft, but in Kerbal Space Program stock, it should be fine. If you're interested about the mods that I'm using, it's underneath the description of the video. Ah, uh, dang it. That's what I didn't need to explode. So while we did land in one piece, I sort of wanted my engine to be intact, but of course this is just a quick throw together in order to show you different types of tricks and tips on your SSRT build. Now there are many types of SSRTs that you can build. You can build ones that launch like a rocket and land like a plane, kind of like the X-33 Venture Star, although this one isn't actually the Venture Star, but it's sort of uh, inspired by it. This SSRT can get uh, 36 tons into orbit and then land like a plane. Now if launching like a rocket isn't really your forte, you can always take off like a plane and land like a plane, but be completely rocket controlled or rocket propelled. This is technically considered an SSRT, but it's more along the lines of SSRT space plane. It takes off from the runway using only the mammoth engines, gets into orbit, delivers a 36 ton payload, and then returns safely back to Kerbin. Now the reason why I like SSRTs way more than your typical oxygen breathing space planes is because it's all about rockets, and rockets are something that we have now, right now, today. We don't have warp drive, we don't have anti-gravity impulse engines, we don't have the coveted Sabre engine, we have rockets. That's what we have right now. So SSRTs are, are very realistic in the sense that we could build them right now if we actually, you know, had a company or money or scientists putting their heads together on this thing, like the, like the Aerospike engine or um, the new engines that uh, SpaceX is working on, stuff of this nature. SSRTs are very realistic compared to other forms of air-breathing SSTOs, which would be great if, if the engine actually existed, but they're still working on it, and we, we don't really know when they're ever going to come out with it. Now, I'd love to go into in more depth detail about SSRTs, but I hope this small little quick video of SSRT tips and tricks has helped you out in anything that you're endeavoring in. So thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing and clicking on that bell notification. I download every day except if I have something important that I got to do. I also try to download other games in the evening while I download uh, before I, or after I download um, KSP in the mornings. So thank you all again. Love you all. Take care and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye bye. Did I say upload or download this time? I, I wasn't paying attention my darling. Shit.